so it works. Good deal. That's how it's supposed to work. Alright, so I said I was going to do a hexapod project, and I was on Thingiverse, and they have all kinds of hexapod projects that you can do for, you know, 3D printing. I ended up picking this one. I was going to do this one, but there wasn't any information on it enough to, for me to build it. So I picked the hexapod by Mark Tech. He had a video with his. So I have to put all the bearings in the servo uh, servo uh, holders for the arms for this hexapod, and there is a lot of them. And I'm finding it difficult to seat the bearings in there, so I'm having to sand the inside of the hole to get the bearings seated. And now I'm trying to also. Uh, based on put the rest of the leg together. So, so, certainly this so I got this part on here. Uh, saying that they are it's put on with a one half 40, 4 by 40, but they also are one half screw and the 4 by 40 hex nut. Okay, so I just have to do this again, twice, and then I gotta doing. have one I will say, however, that's that crooked. So you're not gonna just be able to push this in here. You have to sand everything. Kind of time consuming, but will it be worth it? And the other thing is, these things are brittle. These, uh, some of the parts are extremely brittle, which is these are the servo holders. I've already broken like two of them, they're like potato chips, so you gotta be really fragile with them. This is what the leg's supposed to look like. Hey, okay. it's like how many pieces? It's like one, two, three, four, five. There's a lot of pieces for one leg. I have the Adreno flashing program, and I got it flash it with um, the hexapod file so that it runs off that. And then I got my PlayStation controller, and I have figured out all the wiring because they give you a wiring diagram. The twenty twenty five sixty, the Adreno Mega twenty five sixty. That's the board that's going to go on here. I mean, if you follow the wires and you read the board and you read the diagrams, it's you could pretty much see it. You could see where everything goes. You're like, okay, I see where the wires go. That that wire goes there. That wire goes there. I had actually mapped it out where the wires go, and I set it in. Where is that? Gotta find that map. Gotta find that map. So I had even this this board. I have to make this out of perf board. I had to order perf board so I could make that. And this is the wiring diagram. Wiring diagram. This one, it doesn't, sometimes it, do, it doesn't print right because you don't see all of them, but you follow it, it actually lines up. They're actually in a row. Okay, so it starts out like right here on the side of the board, like 19, and then it, it goes all the way to the top part of the board where it goes all up to 53 for each signal wire okay so I got this on and this part on I had to screw these holes I have to re-screw these holes when I put the 3 8 4 by 40 screws in here because it'll crack It'll crack the plastic. So there's six of these, which will attach to the body of this. And that's what I'm working on right now. And I'm watching hair. Okay, so I got this. This part already hooked up. And I'm not just talking about one or two rooms. I have to attach. Dog kennel used to be the stairs and an accent wall. That together like that. The second part of the arm. Because we can't get a furnace. How's your furnace mm -hmm. coming along? We still have heaters. Nice and cold in here. It's a ton of work. Two by one, four. So 
screws for the servo. You don't have to screw out these holes. Just those. You don't want to crack anything or break anything. As a cement mason, I use the Delft block because I printed all this in 20% infill. The project said to do it 30, but I had already printed it, and I was like, oh well. I don't think it's going to matter though. I think that's just what he did. But, I mean, the parts that are weak are going to be weak whether it's 30 or 20, maybe 40. It would still be weak in the same spot. Now I got to line this up to this with a. Uh, so with dish, you three get eights. the hopper. TV's most powerful DVR. Four by forty three eight eights. Up to two thousand hours. I actually printed these on my Ender, and the bed wasn't hot enough, and this part. This part of it had squished together and risen up, so I had to reprint them. Because you want them to print good, because everything has to line up. I'm just going to screw them real slow and listen for cracks. If it cracks, I have to back it off. There. That part is now... To completed. Completed one of these guys. And I just I don't see how you're gonna get this place ready. Well, we were till ten last night. We'll and it's gotta go on. In two days, probably like that. that. I gotta make sure I put it on the right way. Because back to redo it. We have to do the but I'm gonna have to drill out these holes. My dremel. I've never had a house look this unfinished. Only two days before the opening. This is bad. All right, the last one. These the ones with that, with um, the angle. This one has to go on at an angle, so this has to be square to line up. I like it. And now I gotta drill out these to get this angle to go together. This was a makeshift dog run up here. Floors up here. This big open area. This is pretty cool. Okay, so I got this, the first one done. That's what it looks like. With all its wires. Alright, so I'm having the problems with printing um, the spacers for the feet. It won't do it, basically. I'm, I have two printers and they both won't do it. It keeps messing up. So I'm either, I'm printing too many at once. Because I need 12. So I'm either printing too many at one time. And for some reason, it screws up. I don't know what the deal is, but I got all the legs done. I was just going to go with the, do the spacer thing, but I have these already printed out, and these will work as the same thing. So these will work better, actually. So if you do have, if you did print these out, you should use these instead of the spacer bars. You only need of these. You only need six of these. All right, so I got it all together. I got my hexapod all together. I got my adrenal board on there. I still gotta get. I got my ESC. Oh, I still have to put my ESC on there. Cut my perf board. That's why I'm wondering too. How do you what? You should go home. How did you do your mom's oil? Oh, I used the pliers. She's still going to I had to use the plier, so okay. I got to cut that to the right size, the and I got to put after. this on there. Yes? I was just working at a desk, and I wanted to run some new leads, but... Mm -hmm. Almost done with it. You're sick. And then I just got to <coughs> flash exactly the board with the no, no, no. Adreno, and then I got to get any heroes all the wires. Me. It's time for you to go on home now. Sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I finished, last night, I finished this, and I did a test... But the battery I did a test with was low. It was um, it had low amps, so I'm recharging it, and then I'm gonna do another test. I got my switch installed. It works. Everything works. The 
the receiver I'm using from the PlayStation, it's a cheaper one than the guy than the guy originally had. He had this Logitech controller. I bought an eBay. <clears throat> I bought an eBay generic and just used that chip. The only difference is this one I had um I just it's there's no difference. I just stuck it in this way. Cause there's two ways. What the other side has all the chips on it, this side is kind of just bare. But the setup is still the same for every controller. Because that's why I figured. I figured the it's the same controller uh, system. You know, the the PlayStation 2. So they should all be the same. As far as the pinouts. And it works. So everything, everything works. I do have... The part I thought was going to be the hardest was this part. This little solder deal. But it wasn't that bad. It was pretty easy. Um... And then the wiring, people, the, he doesn't show, but the bottom, the way I did the wiring for the bottom, is I just connected all the positives together, and I connected all the grounds together and heat shrinked them. And then the power is um, connected to the switch with the, you know, I used, um, what is that called? I have an XT60 connector, but I used a Dean's connector. Uh, to be soldered to the main power. It's not recording, or it is. Uh, it might not be recording. Let's see. But that's the underside, and I'm pretty much done. So now I just gotta wait for the battery charge, and then I'll do a test run. Okay, I'm gonna do a test. There's a mode sheet that you can get off Mark's, off Thingiverse, off Mark's site, Mark. Mark Tech, and then I'm going to turn this on. In the first race, Luminier took first blood with the one two. It didn't do the diagnostic setup like his did on his uh, YouTube video. Project build that I got off Thingiverse thanks to Mark Mark Tech for his 3D printed design and to Adreno. My servo is twitching. Well, that's it.